Hi everyone, my name is Galen Egan. I'm on the ocean science team here at SOFAR Ocean. And today we're gonna to be talking about SOFAR's vessel performance models, which are a key component of our Wayfinder voyage optimization system. And really an incredibly valuable tool to stakeholders both shoreside and onboard the vessels that we route. So the goal today is that by the end of this video, you will understand how we create vessel performance models that one of our customers called Scary Accurate. All right, so let's jump right in. What do we mean when we say vessel performance model or BPM for short? So a BPM is really just a computer model of a vessel that predicts its speed and fuel consumption uh, given two primary inputs, the propeller RPM and all of the relevant weather conditions that the vessel's experiencing. And what those outputs, the speed and the fuel predictions can enable is a voyage optimization system that balances all of the market constraints and emissions constraints that a vessel might encounter. So let's sort of solidify that with an example. Uh, let's say that we have a 300 meter long Newcastle Max bulk carrier. It's fully laden, it's sailing in fair weather, and it needs to make 12 knots. So what our VPN can tell you uh, is that in order to hit 12 knots in fair weather, you can set the RPM to 55 and you'll burn about 35 metric tons of fuel. But the really nice thing about our BPM is that you, know, you can plug in any set of weather conditions. Uh, so let's say for simplicity that now instead of fair weather, we're in Beaufort 6. And in order to hit 12 knots, now you need to set RPM uh, to 60 instead of 55. And what that'll cost you in fuel is about an extra 7 metric tons per day. And given the current bunker prices, that could be an extra four or $5,000 per day of the voyage just in fuel costs. So it's that connection between speed, RPM, fuel, and weather conditions, uh, connecting that to the voyage costs, that really shows why the vessel performance model is such a key component of the voyage optimization system. Because fundamentally, voyage optimization is a balance between the cost of time and the cost of fuel. So on the one hand, you can save time by going really fast, but then you end up burning lots of fuel. And that's important, not just because fuel costs money, uh, but because uh, emissions regulations like CII are being actively enforced. And then on the flip side, you can save fuel by going really slow, but then you lose time. Maybe you miss an arrival window at a port. And no matter what those market factors are that, that, that determine the cost of time or fuel, uh, your route needs to be safe. So finding a safe route and finding the optimal balance between speed and fuel, uh, given those ever-changing market factors and business constraints, that requires a hyper-accurate understanding of the relationships among speed and fuel and RPM for any set of weather conditions. And that's what our VPM really provides. Um, so, you know, who's, who's the customer? Who's benefiting from the vessel performance model as part of the voyage optimization system? Well, on board, you've got the captain, you've got the crew and engineers who are responsible for operating the vessel within performance guidelines. So let's say that they have to keep consumption below their charter party requirement. Well, our, our, our vessel performance model can tell them what RPM to set uh, under any weather conditions in order to, to satisfy that requirement. And then shoreside, there are operators and executives who are responsible not only for keeping their fleets profitable, but for tracking the, the decarbonization goals across their entire fleet. And a, a product like Wayfinder with its fleet view allows operators to do exactly that. So we've talked a little bit about vessel performance models in general, but how does SOFAR specifically build these VPMs? Uh, well, we really start with fundamental physics and specifically Newton's second law, which says that the sum of the forces acting on an object equals the object's mass times its acceleration. So if we say that our object is a vessel and that it's moving at an approximately constant velocity, then we end up with a balance of two forces, each as a function of velocity. We have our propulsive forces, uh, and then we have our resistance forces. And the propulsion is what pushes the vessel forward, and the resistance forces, which come from the environment, from waves, from drag on the hull, from wind, that's what resists the propulsion. And by balancing those propulsive forces with the resistance forces, we can solve for a velocity of the vessel, the speed that it moves through the water, and, and then we can relate that using propulsion characteristics uh, to the fuel that it consumes as well. So I'll jump now into each of those specific components uh, of, the vessels, uh, of the vessel performance model. First, let's talk about propulsion. When we're 
building the vessel performance models propulsion system, uh, we really start with fundamental naval architecture principles. Um, we ask every customer uh, for every vessel that they route to provide prop characteristics, so the number of propellers, their diameter, expanded area, whether it's controllable pitch or fixed pitch. And then we ask for hull geometry information as well. So overall length, molded depth, breadth, et cetera. We build a really comprehensive and fundamental view of every vessel that we route. And then we, of course, need engine uh, details as well. So the power limits, uh, RPM limits, and that's really what allows us to make the connection between speed, fuel, uh, and RPM uh, in our vessel performance model. So that takes care of the propulsion system, but then the other side uh, of, of the force balance is the resistance from the environment. And in, in our case, that can come from wind, it can come from waves, and it can come from the, the drag of the water on the hull, uh, which is also affected by ocean currents. And for each of those resistance components, we have really high fidelity, again, physics-based models uh, that represent the environmental resistance for any weather conditions. And at so far, because we run our own operational forecast system, we have access to the absolute best weather variables to insert into these models, which ensures that we're calculating the environmental resistance as accurately as possible. So once we have the propulsion and the resistance forces, then we actually have a first pass at a vessel performance model. And as you can see, uh, the, the, fuel predict the predictive accuracy on this fuel data uh, is pretty good. It captures the broad trends uh, of, the, of the vessel's true performance when measured against uh, this ground truth data. But what we've found is that beyond the purely physics-based model, we can achieve much higher accuracy and drive error even lower if we, if we add a data-driven component. So that data can come from standard noon reports, uh, it can come from higher frequency data too, up to a time resolution of about an hour. And when we adjust our physical models uh, to incorporate that data, then we find that's when our accuracy really becomes scary good and we're able to predict speed and fuel consumption uh, with really unmatched accuracy. So once we've built that hybrid physics data-driven vessel performance model, we're actually not done because uh, at so far we're always collecting more data. Uh, we have our spotter buoys that we're constantly putting more out into the ocean and they're collecting data 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So with more spotters in the water, our weather forecast accuracy is always improving. And when we take that weather data and we pair it with vessel data in real time, then we can continually monitor the accuracy of our vessel performance model and make any adjustments that we need. And then over longer timescales, we can track those updates and start to derive insights about how a vessel's performance might degrade over time to help customers make really important decisions about when they might want to undergo uh, engine maintenance or hull cleaning. So just to summarize everything we talked about, here at SOFAR we generate a hybrid physics and data-driven vessel performance model by combining fundamental physics with really advanced data-driven optimization techniques. And that hybrid model combined with SOFAR's state-of-the-art weather forecast leads to really highly accurate speed and fuel predictions that are a core component of our voyage optimization system, which provides daily speed and geometry guidance to vessels all over the world. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody for listening. I hope you enjoyed hearing about SOFAR's approach to vessel performance models. And please reach out to connect uh, with anyone on the SOFAR team to learn more about anything related to vessel performance models, voyage optimization, and our Wayfinder platform.